Okay, today we're going to be replacing the keypad on this, uh, not keypad, the trackpad on this BlackBerry Curve 9300. Um, the trackpad doesn't work at all. Now, it's very similar to the 8520, the phone itself, but the trackpad is completely different and they're not interchangeable, just so you know. So, as you see, I'm just going to take everything out as usual, same steps. And uh, we're going to use a T6. Oh, take the memory card out too, very important. You'll crack it if you try to take it apart without doing that. Now, what I do is use the T6, get the two screwdrivers in the back out. There's only two screws on the back, the rest are in the front. Then we're going to remove the lens. Now, to remove the lens, I would recommend heating it up first with uh, either a heat gun or a blow dryer and be very careful this is a very easy to melt don't get it too hot just go around the edges real quick um, I'm gonna be right back my heat guns in another room uh, I'm gonna go heat it up and then I'll be right back and we're back so for this step you can use a metal or plastic spudger or case opening tool or a pick plastic pick it's up to you um, you gotta pry the lens off now I usually start with the soft part down here at the bottom, but do not bend this corner, whatever you do, because you will get lines, permanent lines that will stay there. And you can, this lens has two layers. It has the outer layer and then a protective layer. And if you separate the two, you'll have an ugly glue mark in the corner that you can't get rid of. So try to grab the thick part, which is right here at the corner and start prying from there. You gotta make sure you grab in the thicker part and then it should come right off. See what I mean if you can see, I don't know if you can see in the video but it's thinner here and it gets thicker so be very careful with that one. Now we gotta remove this bottom piece here. Um, use a plastic pick or something. It's pretty strong. It'll seem like it looks like it's gonna break but it's pretty strong. Um, and it should unclip right off like that. And then there's two screws there which we don't have to remove yet. To remove the bezel, very easy. You'd, even with your nail or a case opening tool, just, it'll click like that. You lift up those two bottom corners, then the rest will come right off like that. Sometimes easier than others. And the keypad comes off too. Put that on the side. And we've got a ways to go yet. We got one, two, three, four, five, six screws that have to come out. Um, so work on that now. Ooh. Now they're all the same length and the same uh, size in every way so you don't have to remember individually where they all go now that they're all out this little piece here comes out and then you're ready to take the whole phone apart it, be very careful on this step but you gotta separate the back plastic uh, with the motherboard okay so just stick something in like this and just work it and eventually you'll start seeing it popping off once one side's out it's pretty easy the other side will just come right out but the only thing that stays stuck sometimes is the camera so just <coughs> excuse me gently pry it out it'll be okay and then that's the back part this houses the speakers um, and the headphone jack and all these little buttons uh, and whatnot. Also, the antenna is on here. It connects here, goes around the back. So now the screen comes off. I'd recommend taking it off. It wants to come off anyways. And then this plastic keypad uh, cover. And there's the LCD. If you want to change the LCD, a lot of times the LCDs for these phones are 007s, but occasionally you'll get a 010. And this one, if you don't see any writing here or here, is probably like 004 or 005. 
and the only way to check would be to separate the frame from the LCD and the LC and and then it'll be underneath this metal here. Um, so don't do it unless you have to change it because separating this from this the LCD from this frame um, is pretty hard. And then we have the keypad membrane uh, here, the motherboard. So to get the keypad out, preferably you would want to heat this up a little bit to get the glue soft, but you don't have to. Um, if it rips, it's not a big deal, it's just a cosmetic issue, but try not to rip it, especially if it's for a customer, because they will see it behind the battery. So you lift up this tape, this sticker here. You don't have to take it all off, just like that. And there's a rice in here. It's funny, because customers don't like to tell you when they have water damaged their phone. But the only reason there's rice in there is because I've set it in a bucket of rice at some point. Um, but anyways, we'll continue with the repair. We lift up this uh, plastic, is protecting the trackpad. Then you lift up the clip, very carefully like that. Turn the phone around, and gently wiggle it and slide the trackpad out. And there it is. Take your new trackpad, which is actually the exact same as the BlackBerry Torch in most cases, in all cases I've seen anyways. And then you slide this one in. This part's a little tricky. You gotta push it in and use your thumb here to guide it. If anybody knows an easier way, let me know. <laughs> Uh, if you take this this whole sticker off completely, it might be easier because your thumb won't be getting stuck to it. <coughs> but you don't generally you don't want to remove that whole thing because it's a pain to line it up at the end and it could rip. And then you don't want when you do a repair, you don't want to leave a uh, signs that you did a repair. You want to make it look you know as original as possible. So push that in and if you want you hold it with your thumb and you can actually use a tool here to because it has two little edges there you can use to push it into the slot see see once it starts to go into the slot you're in the home stretch because you can use something here to push the connector in just be very careful it's not sharp Make sure it's all the way in. If it's not all the way in, it will not work. Trust me on that one. Now, I'm a little iffy on using that metal thing, so I'm going to use a plastic pick here to push it right in. And that's in. Now you replace this right away. The little round part here goes facing up around that edge. It can only go one way. If you do it wrong, it won't fit right. Then you tape this back. Okay. Flip it around. Put this on. And then what you can do is you can put the LCD on first, or you can do it this way. You put this on the back in here. You make sure you hear some clipping. Make sure the charger port lines up with the hole. Then you put the LCD on. The side snap right in snugly. Make sure about that. And then we put all the screws back in. Put that little plastic thing in here first. This is what actually holds the bezel in place at the end here. All right. you start screwing it in. Now when we turn this on, if the trackpad doesn't work, there's a small chance that the trackpad is defective that I put in, in which case I will look for another one and test it. But for the video purposes, I'm not going to do it on the video, I'm just going to pretend that it works. The other reason it may not work is because the phone was water damaged and that wasn't disclosed to me when the phone was brought in. Um. One second here. Okay. So 
let's continue putting these screws in. Do it up here so we'll even it out here. Now I would recommend at this stage, before you put it all together, um, to test the trackpad. Okay. So put all the screws in to make sure the battery is going to be nice and de snug and will detect it. Oh, yep, yeah, believe it or not, we can test it at this point. It's no use getting the lens back together, cleaning out the dust and all that. And you can just put in the battery right now. Wait for it to boot up. Okay. One sec here. And as you can see, trackpad track pad is working. I'm gonna, it's a little sensitive because while it was dying, whoever had this phone probably turned up the sensitivity to try to get it to work. We'll go into the options here and change the sensitivity. Um, it might be under typing and input. Trackpad sensitivity. Turn it down to 50. Oh, and that's perfect. Works perfectly. So now we'll finish putting it back together. Um, shut the phone off. You could use, just yank the battery out. It usually has no repercussions, but uh, it's not my phone, so I'm going to be careful with it. And take the battery out. Let the keypad stay there. You put the bezel on. Oh. At this point, you can snap this back on. Now, if you do it yourself, you can probably get the trackpad online for ten bucks. If it's less than ten dollars, be careful. Uh, try not to get it from China, but there's nothing wrong with getting it from China. When you do buy it in the states or in Canada, a lot of them times they've already bought it from China, but it's easy to give it back. If you get it from China and you spend four dollars, let's say, and they ship it to you, if it doesn't work, guess what? You're not going to be able to ship it back. It's going to cost you like forty bucks because they won't accept it. I mean, you have to ship it with tracking because if you don't ship it with tracking, and take it from me, they will tell you they never received it and there's nothing you can do about it if you return it. They will not refund you unless you return it. So try to buy it from the States or Canada because it doesn't cost you that much to ship it back with tracking number. Um, and if it's less than $10, be careful. Um, I pay usually around $12 for my trackpads. Um, if you want to do it yourself, that's the estimated cost. $12, $12 to $20 is safe. You take it to a shop, it'll be about 50 bucks. Doing it yourself will save you some time. The thing about taking it to a shop is they'll give you, if it's a reputable company, um, what I do is I give 90 day warranty. I replace it, 90 day warranty, um, as long as the phone isn't water damaged, of course, or there's physical damage, like drop, being dropped or whatnot. I give 90 day warranty. So you pay 50 bucks, you know it's going to work. Uh, if it doesn't work, um, you won't get charged, of course. And that's the safest way to go if you're not used to this. But doing it yourself can save you $30 to $40. Um, there's just no warranty about it at all. Obviously. So I'm going to clean the screen here a little bit. Um, these phones do tend to get a lot of dust. And I have an air gun in the back. I'm going to go blow it out to get the dust out. At the moment I'm just trying to clean the, the dust leaves a little residue on the LCD. And it aggravates people. Just a little added service here. I 
make sure you use a very clean microfiber cloth when you're cleaning any LCD screen because they're extremely easy to scratch and you don't want to apply too much pressure of course. Just get that dust out of the lens. When you clean the lens, make sure that you don't go over the edge and get glue on your cloth because you're going to spread it all over the lens and that's a pain in the butt so I'm just gonna put it on there right now I'll clean it later now put some pressure around the edge to get the lens back on make sure it's even when you go like this it's not popping out any corners okay I already put the screws in the back end, um, so all that's left to do is put the SIM card, memory card, oh, I already put the memory card in, battery, battery door, and final test. Now we already tested to make sure it works, so it should work. But just gonna let it boot up and we'll test it one more time. Here's the old trackpad and the remainder of the rice that someone used. <laughs> that's funny I, have a, I haven't done much with my YouTube account but uh, I'm dedicating more time on getting all these uh, devices repaired it's too much money to be going to the store and getting a new, a new phone just because of something you could fix yourself as you can see it's still working scrolling around see And that's how you change the trackpad on a 9300. Thanks for watching.